John Lennox, tail of the tape. Harbaugh, seven years older than Jamal Charlo. Charlo, one inch taller. Has the reach advantage as well. Just moments after witnessing his brother's first loss as a pro. Here is the still undefeated, 27 and 0. With 21 knockouts, Jamal Charlo, the interim WBC middleweight champ. Tonight, the first defense of his title. gentlemen from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. This is Premier Boxing Champions on Fox, and this is our main event of the evening, sponsored by MGM Resorts. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC. The president is Mauricio Suleiman, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. Judging at ringside for this bout, we have Max DeLuca, Larry Hazard Jr., and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Interim Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, it's Fight Night on Fox. Introducing you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue trunks, fighting out of Lentana, Florida, by way of Orokutan, Russia. He weighed in at 159 and three quarter pounds, with a record of 28 wins and one loss. He has 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his second attempt at a world title, please welcome the former Olympian and the former world title challenger, introducing Matt Portobello. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing purple trunks with red and white trim, fighting out of Houston, Texas. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 27 wins, no losses, 21 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former IBF junior middleweight world title holder, the current and undefeated hard-hitting WBC interim middleweight champion of the world, introducing the undefeated Jamal Hitman Charlo. And the referee in charge, now giving instructions, taking it the fields. Okay, gentlemen, we scheduled about 12 rounds for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. I'm going over the rules in the dress room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Joe and Lennox, what effect could watching his brother's first pro defeat just a short while ago have on Jamal Charlo? Well, it could affect him positively or negatively. <laughs> he basically has to keep his head down yeah. because I know how I would feel going in there. So 
you know, hopefully his point is telling him, calm down, take your time, don't go out there too rushed, and, you know, let things happen the way they should. I will tell you it's happened to me before where one of the brothers lost, and it does affect you, at least it affected me. It, it's a little bit of a bummer, you have to go back and get the other brother and bring him out, you've got a little cloud hanging over your head. Oh, yeah, definitely that has to affect him. I know how I feel. All right, here we go. Jamal Charlo, the interim WBC middleweight champ, his first title defense. Taking on 35-year-old Matt Korobov, a southpaw from Russia, who now trains in the St. Petersburg, Florida area. You know, we spoke earlier, uh, Joe, about potential adjustments for Korobov over the last week when he found out about his new opponent. How about from... Toronto's standpoint, he was training for Willie Monroe Jr. Oh, he was, but he was training for a southpaw, so he had a lot of southpaw sparring, so it's not a big switch up. It's a different type of southpaw in front of him than Willie, uh, than Willie uh, Monroe. But um, I will tell you, you know, Korobov is a shorter arm guy, but he's a much more aggressive guy than Monroe uh, would have been. So it, it changes things a little bit, but we'll see how this unfolds. You know, uh, Korobov has got some, uh, big wins over two reigning champions right now, Alexander uh, Usak, and um, uh, the other champion is at 168, um, uh, Jose uh, Us Uh huh. So, uh, you know, he's a quality, quality fighter. Uh, he's been inactive for quite a while as uh, Korobov, but, uh, Korobov, but um, we'll see if, if the extended training uh, he got a little bit of rust off of him, but right now he's a dangerous guy. Korobov's last fight back on March 24th. He has a record of 28 to 1, 14 by knockout. Represented Russia in the 2008 Olympics. Lost in the second round. Following 300 wins as an amateur, only 12 defeats. Yeah, he's got a great pedigree, and. Um, you know, being a southpaw poses a lot of problems for right-handers normally because, you know, even, uh, you know, uh, both uh, Charles brothers went the distance with Austin Trout. He's not a big puncher, but he's a very crafty southpaw, so it may, may pose a little bit of a problem unless Charlo figures him out right away. Charlo facing his third left-handed opponent in the last five fights. Yeah, and he stopped uh, uh, Hyland, and uh, he went the distance with Trout, the last two southpaws he fought. Korobov not, not really using moving his head too much. His head's pretty in one in one place. His legs are wide apart, so we're going to see how that affects him. Well, he uses a lot of upper body movement. I watched some film on him, and he likes to go to the body off of the slip. Good straight left hand. Him. Final seconds, round one. And back in Brooklyn, it's the PBC on Fox. Round two scheduled for 12. Kenny Albert, Rick, Pitt, Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, Heidi Andrew, Chris Myers, Boo Boo Man City, Kate Abdul with us as well. Ball Charlo, one minute older than his twin brother, Jermell, who suffered his first defeat as a professional earlier tonight. Uh, maybe there was a coin flip to see who would fight in the main event taking place right now. Jermell Charlo and Tony Harris in a cold main event. Harrison in a stunt. <laughs> by unanimous decision. Yeah, not one I particularly <laughs> agreed with at all. But, you know, back to the action here right now. Uh, you've got Korobov, who's really looking pretty good right now. He's landed a couple of nice shots. He landed a good counter hook, which uh, Charlo, in fact, answered with a hook. So it, it's getting a little rough on the inside. You can tell Korobov's a strong guy on the inside. He's muscling. He, when he gets on the inside, he'll, he'll hold you and work the other hand. So let's see if uh, Charlo can get to him now. He looks very strong tonight, Charlo. Charlo's throwing that right hand, and he's just dropping short with it. Needs to step in a little bit more with another jab to get that distance in there. 
Do you find it harder to get your jab off on a southpaw than a regular front-handed front? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Usually, Why is that? Usually, because they're, they're just, well, he just leans back, actually. But uh, Jamal needs to throw that right hand a little bit more. But Jamal just got cracked with a little lead left hand right there from Barbaugh. But oh, yeah, he, it, he, he blocked it there. Yeah, well, you know, you're still going to feel a little bit of that, right? Oh, yeah, you know, he's got to watch out for it. Final minute. Round two, scheduled for 12. Seconds remaining in round two. All right, break some points. Break some points. We landed two out of those three punches in that combination. There were there were solid uh, punches that. Uh, <laughs> Jermall took. Jermall yeah. still warming up. Yeah. He looks very dangerous tonight, but uh, Korobov looks very slick. He's very tricky. He's very experienced. Korobov had the 8 6 edge in power punches, which connected in round two. Well, we, we predicted this was going to be a tougher fight than uh, Willie Monroe, and it's already starting out to be a third round here. They both exchanged some good shots. Korobov has landed shots that I don't think William Monroe would have landed, to tell you the truth. And they both have similar records. So that's as thick, well, baby. So, you know, they're not up against any slouches in this game. Monroe's drug test and adverse finding, so. Korobov, the late replacement just a week ago for Monroe. <laughs> I'll tell you, if I was the trainer for Charlo, I would have loved to have had Monroe in front of me no. instead of this guy. <laughs> He's got a lot more tools, he's a lot more dangerous, a lot more experience. Warbob was initially scheduled to fight on the undercard tonight, but instead he's in the ring with the interim WBC middleweight champ in his first title defense. Nice right hand by Charlo with the body. He's got to start going downstairs because he's trying to hit this guy to the head. He's got pretty good defense, pretty good head movement. Yeah. Plus, he's watching. He's looking out for those type of shots. He needs to really step in more with his punches. Get him against the ropes before throwing that right hand. Man, there's some fast action here. There was a, there's a punch and a counter and then another counter punch. So, both of these guys will be accurate and fast tonight. It's very quick-handed uh, fighters, both of them. It's the second world title challenge for Korobov. Knocked out in the sixth round by Andy Lee back in 2014 for the vacant WBO middleweight title. And, and it's worth saying, Andy Lee was a fellow southpaw. He's only been beaten by one guy, and that's been a fellow southpaw. And Andy Lee was a, a tremendous fighter. Another guy trained by Manny Stewart who was very powerful. But he's never lost to a right-hander. That's Korobov. And Korobov is actually ahead on all the scorecards. Against Andy Lee. Right. Yeah. He said the loss was a good lesson. And he been his wife right after that. Stella. They have a three-year-old son named Amelia. And that's who Matt Corbin was taking that next to and he received the phone call. Oh, good kid. I'll tell you that. If somebody doesn't watch it, they're going to be taking a nap right here because that was a great left hand landed by Corbin. But, you know, again, Charles shook it off and he's marching right back. With the pressure. Time winding down in round three. So, you know, Charlo's, uh, I, I think, just a, a tad behind. But again, 12 round fight. He's strong, he's big, he's put the pressure on. And he'll probably at some point slow Korobov down in the next few rounds. Over to Heidi Antro with Matt Korobov's trainer, Charles Bowie. Heidi. What have you seen thus far from your fighter, and what do you want to see more of? That's it, bring it like that, baby. That's right. That's right. Stay loose. I'm gonna keep it loose. 
I want to stay busy with the combinations because the board's wild. He never stop. Nice shot. I want to see the combinations. A lot of combinations. I'm in the fight, Mama. Thank you. Go for it, Kenny. <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Heidi. And as you can hear, they do communicate in English, although Korobov is Russian. Big left there by Korobov. He's lived in the United States for the last 10 years. His parents have lived in the U.S. for 20 years. In fact, at one point, he went 10 years without seeing his parents. He was still back in Russia. That happens a lot. Uh, believe me, I trained a couple of Russian. I'm training uh, guy Sergey Lipinets, who will be fighting on Fox 1 pretty soon for the title. And they separate from their families for a long time because of their profession. But in the meantime, Gorbachev landed another great left hand and a good hook right there. And I think he's a little bit ahead in this fight right now. You never know with these judges what's going to happen. But yes, I, I agree with you there. He def definitely is throwing that left hand and being accurate with it and landing with it. And Jamal has to be really careful because he can't be hit by those hands too, those right hand, left hands too much. Right as his brother Jamel learned earlier, our Larry Hazard had Jamel winning the fight with Tony Harris in 117, 111. And all three judges had it the other way on their scorecards. Now it is early and uh, uh, ooh, man, a little left hand can sneak it in really nice by Corobot. But I, I, I just sense that that Jamal's going to somehow land his shots coming up in the next couple of rounds. He's going to figure this out. And he's going to be hes going to be more, uh, I, I think, more attentive to what's going on. He'll land his shots in the next couple of rounds. But he's got some catching up to do. Final half minute in round four, scheduled for 12 from Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, that one didn't land as effectively, but but you see, Charles trying to time the counters now. He's squatting a little bit lower. He's starting to figure out what he has to do to get closer to him. And uh, he'll figure it out. And Charlo, he, he can't jump in because that's what he's doing. He's jumping in with that left right. Well, you know who's jumping in is Korobov with the straight left hand, and it's working for him. All right, here we go. We had another look at Terry Hinton, Charlo's mom, as a teacher, a teacher, administrator, and the gym down in Houston, Texas. over to Heidi in the Charlo corner with trainer Ronnie Shields. Thank you very much, Kenny. Ronnie, what did you say to Jamal going into this round? <laughs> Just got to, you know, he's standing too still. He got to move his head a little bit. Got to fade the guy, you know, more. And just keep going in behind the shot. Is his mindset any different after what happened in his brother's fight? A little bit, a little bit, you know, but I had to talk to him. And, you know, he's, he's okay, though. He's okay. Right, thanks, Kenny. Back to you. And uh, that was... Exactly what I asked you, Joe, at the start of this fight. So Ronnie Shields admitting that he had to yeah. discuss what took place uh, with his brother, with Jamal, before this fight. And I agree with him because I've been in that situation before. And it does affect you. It affected me. It has affected one of the brothers uh, once or twice where we had a loss or two. So, yeah. But getting back to this here, you heard, you know, uh, in the corner uh, from Ronnie Shields, he's saying that, you know, he's standing up too tall, which is my point. You can see. Uh, Jamal squatting a little bit more, feigning a little bit more, a little bit more headwork. And if he keeps doing that, he'll start landing his punches. And right now, it looks like uh, Korobov is maybe getting a little bit tired here. Look at Larry Hazard's unofficial scorecard. Larry has Korobov up 39 37 after winning the last three rounds. Yeah, I love this agreement. There's two halves to this fight. You know, it's, it's the first half and the second half. And I think, uh, you know, Jermel will probably start, Jermel will start coming, coming on and landing his punches too. This is the problem with softball. Sometimes you, you end up two, three, four rounds behind before you finally figure them out. Yeah, Jamal needs to uh, step up a little bit more. I think he needs to switch up his punches a little bit more and throw some straight rights and show Korobov that he's throwing different punches. Korobov is catching him with straight left, so he should catch him with straight right. They've got the advantage over the right-handers because, you know, let's face it, how many, you know, softballs do you fight in the career or spar in a career? Not many. These guys spar right-handers every day of their lives in the gym, and that's all they do is fight right-handers. So, you know, they've got the distinct advantage here. So when, when Jamal was doing his right-handed head, 
Cormac slipping off to the left and then coming back to counter. That's a that's a trick that the Southpaws used. But what Jamal just did well was he went with the right hand of the body. You gotta go downstairs with these guys before you can start throwing their head. Ten seconds remaining in round five. Well, inside PBC Boxing is your one stop for all things Premier Boxing Champions. Join Ken Abdel, Sean Porter, and Abner Morris for interviews, news, and analysis you can't get anywhere else. Catch Inside PBC Boxing Tuesday, January 8th at 10 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. We get you set for round six. Scheduled for 12 here in Brooklyn. One of our colleagues, Showtime, Sean Porter, WBC welterweight champ. Yeah, what a, what a personality Sean is. He's not only a two-time world champion now, but he's also got a great personality. He's, he's, like I said, he's got a bright career ahead of him, whatever he wants. No, let's go, man. Sure does. Round six, scheduled for 12. Uh, there you go, Charlie, there you go. Interim WBC middleweight champion, his first title defense. And 35-year-old Matt Korobov. Power punches landed, 27% for Charlotte, 30% for Korobov. Charlo just landed a nice little counter hook there. He's starting, he's starting to figure out uh, Korobov a little bit. He's, he's landed the right hand of the body a little bit. He's making little slips and feints. You gotta do that. You gotta work your way in to make these guys miss so you can get in the counter shots that Korobov was doing to Jamal earlier. He's gotta start doing that. Make him miss, make him pay. Was anything surprised you, Lennox? Yeah, um, you know, Korobov is definitely not getting hit like he should be. <laughs> oh, like Jim Hall wants him to hit. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but, you know, look, I mean, Ray, Man Ray Mancini said it at the top of the show, this is a much top, tougher opponent than when uh, William Mazzola was proven to be true. It's true. Well, I think we all figured that. We knew this guy's credentials, and, well, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a tough fight, and if uh, Jim Hall keeps the pressure up, I think he'll be able to start gaining some ground on uh, Korobov, which he needs to do. If he wants to hold on to his time. He's, he's warming up to the fight. He's not getting caught with those straight left hands anymore. So he's worked that out. Yeah. But again, you really, the closer you are to a southpaw, the more, the better it is for a right hand. But the farther away from you are, the more advantage they have. So he, if he's smart, he'll get close. If he can, he's got to move his feet forward. Oh, I agree with you. Like, like, you know, like the other brother you were saying to about Jamal, you know, you got to get him closer to the ropes and then start that combination so he can't escape. In the meantime, Korvov just landed a great left, straight left hand, right uppercut. He's a very accurate puncher. He knows his way around the ring and he knows his way around the right hand. Tell you that. This is where this is where he has to go to work. Don't let him escape. That's where he has to put in the work. Down to 20 seconds remaining in round six. See, he's stuck. This is where he's got to throw the combinations. Korobov's being very slick. You know, he, you're right, he hadn't picked up the ropes, but he still slipped with the uh, big right hands. Let's head upstairs, check in with Chris and Boom Boom. Yeah, Kenny, we've already had one stunning upset tonight, and we may be on our way with another, the last minute one week fill in, the Russian Matt Korobov, who you have talked about throughout. He said, you know, he's been used to filling in. He's been a step in guy for previous fights. That experience has helped him. Let's learn more about the 35-year-old Russian who stands at 
five feet eleven, and on some cards, at least has established an early pace, Ray, of needing in this fight. It seems like the overhand lefts have been landing against Charlo. Yes, I, I don't know how Jamal Charlo could not be affected by what happened to his brother, as close as they are. And at this point, I think Matt Korbarov is winning in this fight. Well, we asked uh, Jamal about the mentality. Is it different when you're under a, you're defending a title versus going after a title? He said not much, but he should have learned from his brother how things could be different. That's not true. When you're the champ, when you're going for the title, you're the hunter. When you're a champion, you're the hunted. And let's rejoin the action with Kenny and Prue. All right, thanks, guys. Round seven underway. Jamal Charles and Matt Steve Oh, great way handled by Jamal Charlo right there. He's finally finding the way. Get that back! And you notice it was a straight right. It was. He's mixing up the punches like he should. It's hard to hit a, a left hander with any other type of right hand. Now, I remember going into a fight where a guy taped to my belly and hit me in the face. <laughs> there it is, right here. Oh, so right, right, right there, straight right down the pipe. Yeah, like I was saying, hit, he faked down to the belly and hit me in the face, so I did the same thing to him back. And of course, I, I caught him. Was it a left hander? <laughs> yes. We had a look at Larry Hazard's unofficial scorecard. Larry gave it trouble the last two rounds. Has it even at 57 in the first six. Yeah. I think, I think Jamal Trello is, is making some headway back into this fight. Although he threw a good right hand to the body, and uh, Korobov landed a, a quick little counter hook step at that. So he's, well, he's a smart, smart fighter in there. And uh, Jamal's just going to have to try to bowl him over, to tell you the truth. Jamal has thrown over 100 more punches than yeah. Korobov to this point. Because he's trying to get to him. He's, he's being out slick right now, so he's got to really outwork this guy, get him tired, and then hopefully slow him down where he can run do some substantial damage. Right now, Korobov is being real slick. And this is a good spot for Jamal to have him on. He's going to take advantage of that. What about the road side? Sometimes you got to take a step back and kind of allow the guy to come to you so you can punch him. So Jamal needs to do that sometimes. Or you can step back and the guy may not oblige you either, so you've wasted some time. So, you know, it, it's a two-edged sword there. I, I really think now that Jamal is has got a really pressure this guy and put his body on and start working. That's what we're doing physically. Paul Barth is expecting that, so you know, he's waiting to come to him. Well, that's what he needs to do right there. He's got to get close and pull this combination to yeah. He got his hands up high, but again, those are counting in the judge's eyes right now. He's got to pull punches, and he's got to be close enough to do it. Like I said, the closer you get to a southpaw, the better. The, the less effective they can be. And I agree with that part. Here's, here's what you want. Let's see if it pays off for So when you, wind, when you wind up like that, the opponent can see your intent. So it's better to, to throw the combinations and put the accent on the last punches. All right, good round, good round, good round. Good round. Let's listen in to Give the corner deep, of Jamal Charlo. Give me a deep one, give me a deep one. Give me another one. All right, that was a good busy round that time. That's what we got to do. You got to just look. Sometimes when I'm saying touch, just stick the jab out. As long as you're moving it, he can't, the ref can't say nothing. Just keep, and then drive him with the right hand, okay? You're making him fall short a lot now with, with, with that left hand, okay? You got to keep him falling short with that left hand like that. Give me a deep one, let it out slow, all right? You just keep it, keep yourself, keep your head, okay? You just keep thinking about what you're doing, moving that head. As when you move your head, I know you're thinking. This Charlo using the jab. This is what he has to do, double jab before that right hand. He has that overhand straight right. This is round eight, scheduled for 12. Kenny Albert, Champ Lennox Lewis, Joe Gusson, Adi Andro from Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York. In round seven, Jamal Trollo landed 20 punches. That's a fight high for Trollo tonight. And how about the total number of jabs thrown? 207 for Trollo and 55 for Corvall. 
Yeah, but there was an exchange right there in the center of the ring where they both landed some yeah. good, hard shots. It was good. You know, that, that's what's going to tell the tale, and that's what's going to do the damage. It's not really the jab here. That's a measuring stick as far as I'm concerned. It's going to do the damage on uh, real hard shots. Counter hooks by Kurobov, the straight right hands by Charlo. But somebody's Charlo has got to get it close, and I think what Ronnie Shields said is, I like how you were busy and you threw a lot of punches. He's got to do that. The only thing I didn't agree with was him telling J Jamal to go in there and push through with that right hand because he's really telegraphing it. He's showing the guy that he's going to throw that punch, so he's got to disguise it with some other punches first. It's, listen, Southpaws really know how to defend against the right hand. You have to switch That's up the left they're used to it. They're yeah. used to boxing yeah. these guys. You have guys. to switch up the left hooks to yep. body shots. Do something hand. different. Right. Slip, slip off the jab side and, and try to work the body and then maybe a right hand at the time. Charlo watched earlier from his locker room as his twin brother, Jamal, suffered the first defeat of his professional career in a shocker at the distance. Adam has decision on the judges' scorecards. Howard Larry has it. Scored it 117-111 for Charlo. I agree with that almost entirely, to tell you the truth. But right here, we're in a similar situation where, you know, this is a very, uh, very close fight. Uh, I see Charlo coming on now the last few rounds, but he's got to do more. I mean, uh, he's got to really land something of substance to turn this fight around completely for him. Or else it's, it's a little tip for tap back and forth. And that's not good when you're in the corner and you're the trainer. Well, your advice, Joe, being a trauma. Well, not waste a second here. You've got to look. This guy's 35 years old. He's been out of the ring for a year and a half. He hasn't been going, you know, uh, in any hard fights in a long time. you got to make this a hard fight for him. you got to really sacrifice your body a little bit more. Push yourself, force yourself on top of this guy. Make him work and wear him out. And hopefully then by the later rounds, which we're getting to right now, or in, or in, that you can maybe land that knockout punch. But he has to be careful. He has to be careful. You know, you know, he's he's this is his punches, and he's getting hit with the left hand. In the later rounds now, he's not really getting hit. He's very aware of that left hand. You can be careful and lose the fight, you know. Um, From Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York, this is round nine, scheduled for 12 for the WBC interim. Broadway title. The champ, Jamal Charlo, and the 35 year old from Russia, Matt Carabao. And Charlo just landed with a right hand there, straight right. Good shot. Good shot. Good shot. Who has the edge in, in your mind when you the first eight rounds? I think he went back and forth. I think uh, Ch Charlo got hit in the first couple rounds with a straight right. You know, he, when you change opponents, you just got to get used to the new opponent. And uh, it takes a couple rounds to do that. Ronnie Shields was really exhorting uh, uh, Jamal Charlie in the corner to start pressing, to start letting his hands go, and really forcing the issue. And basically saying, don't be careful. You know, you got to let, you got to throw cocks for the win right now. Because he thinks it's a close fight as well, as, as he was saying. So, you know, he's got to do something to make it obvious that he's winning these rounds. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, a, he's aware of that left hand by Korobov, so, and he's not getting caught, he's not getting caught with it like he, he was in the first few rounds. Speaking of Roddy Shields and Charles Crowe, let's check in with Heidi. Thank you very much. Well, actually, Joe, you are exactly right. I just spoke to Roddy. He said he wants him to stay behind the jab, and he wants more right hands. Guys, and he's landing him right now. Let me tell you, he's landed a great couple jabs and a straight right hand. But you got to still follow up much more quickly. You can't land those back off and wait. You got to keep the pressure on. This is you've only got a few minutes left, few rounds left in this fight. One minute remaining in round nine. Jabs through and a percentage. Lennox, what's impressed you the most about Korvon to this point? How well he throws that left hand. I mean, it comes across straight and is powerful. His defense is good, too. It's not like he got caught in a lot of shots.
got a look at the number of jabs thrown. Jamal Chalmer will be donating 10 bicycles per jab to children affected by the wildfires out in the West Coast, California area, such as the congestion. Well, just because of that, I hope he throws a lot more jabs as well. So far, he's up to about 420 bicycles. Well, he needs 420 punches right now, I'll tell you that, to win this fight. I need, I, I really want to see, you know, him keep pressing like that. Let's listen in to the corner of Matt and Torvald. Your feet got to move. You hear me? You can't plant your feet and fight this guy. Your feet got to go inside. And when you give that one shot to the body, you got to come with a combination. You hear me? You stepping out too many times. I want you to step in there and serve it. I need you to step up for me, okay? You got to use your jab more. If you're going to throw a jab, make it be in doubles. You got it? Stiff jab. You're with me, Jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You got, you got to get your win together. And the reason you're not getting it together now because you're standing still. You got to act like you're on the track, baby. Let your feet work for you. Come on, I don't smell nothing. Here's Charlo using this. This is what he needs to do. Throw more jabs like this. And the last round, he threw a lot more jabs. Well, 93% of the fight has been spent from distance, allowing Charlo to land 43 jabs over the first nine rounds. This is round 10, scheduled for 12 in Brooklyn. You know, if I'm in the corner of either of these guys, I'm saying, look, I, you need these three rounds. This fight is very close. Um, I think Charlo is, is, you know, pulled back into the fight here and has been gaining ground the last few rounds. But these last three are very, very important. And uh, I really think Charlo needs these rounds to make it, to, to, to hold his title, to tell you the truth. He's up 87 84 on Larry Hazard's out of his scorecard, but as we learned in the wire bound and following news, I, 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 I would not take it for granted. I, I, I would want to make sure and I would want to win these next three rounds you know, without any doubt. Cholo's not getting hit by that left hand anymore. I mean, he's blocked, he blocked it a couple of times, he's, he's gotten used to it. Now he needs to, you're right, he needs to do a little bit more work. He needs to work with a little more more urgency. Well, I think he, he, he I think he closed the gap and is ahead a hell of a little bit. But I, you can't leave it in the judge's hands as we saw tonight. You've got to definitively, you know, prove that you've won these rounds. And that's what I mean. He's got to really, I think, step on the gas right now. He should go back to that jab. That jab was working for him in the last round, so he needs to go back to it now. There you go. Charlo's waiting for that perfect shot. He still exactly. needs to go with that jab. Yeah, that's why I said the busier you are, the less chance, and that was a great combination. That's what he needs to do. He's got to keep repeating that. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Too much of a break in between. He needs to keep coming. The final minute of round 10, scheduled for 12. But it's a great fight because it's a competitive fight, and that's what you want. You don't want you know, easy fights, even if, you know, you know, no matter who you are, you, you, you know, if you're a fan, you want to see a competitive fight, and that's what we got here tonight. Matt Korbov, a last-minute replacement. That's the way to go as Charlo lands a right. Charlo uh, misses that right hand. Korobov goes right down. Korobov goes right down with that liver shot with that left uppercut. Man, it's very effective. Great right, great right hand by Charlo. That's what he needs to do. Keep the pressure up. You know, you're going to take an occasional counter shot for Bobby, yeah. but it's worth it. Yeah, he, he looked good that round. Yeah. Charlo, Charlo's an athlete. This is how you get in, moving in using your feet to get closer to your opponent so you can throw some punches. Great combination. Ready. 
All right? Yeah. the championship rounds right here. You got 11 and 12, no. Lennox. Yeah, don't and, you know, go in here. If you're in the corner okay. for uh, Carlo, what are you telling him? Don't I'm telling him to step it up. Okay. I mean, he's so got he's the got, rhythm of Korobov right now. Yeah. He's not getting hit in the left hand. The so he needs to step it up. I, I okay. think, this is it. you know, he has to go for it right now. Yeah. Going into the double Nothing. Round. Okay. Now, here. Now, I've got him a little bit ahead. Let's make no doubt about I got him this, ahead as well. Okay. Let's go to work. This is what we do. All right. This is what we do. This is This is the first time Korbov has gone past 10 rounds in his professional career. Second time for Charlo. Charlo looks like the fresher, sharp guy right now. And he just landed a good lead left hook. Little right from Korbov as he answers. He got that one back. Robbie Levin scheduled for 12. Ooh. Harbaugh had a duck out of the way. Yeah, he still got clipped with a little right hand. Charlie was shot and spoke down. Put up the angle. Harbaugh, but then it's a lot of give and take here right now. And Charlie Mason, he just has a little bit more. Do a couple more feints. He's not doing more feints. Well, Charlie looking to retain his title. Following the <laughs> upset <laughs> defeat suffered by his twin brother, Mr. That was a situation where he missed and he was off balance, and Charlo made him pay for it. <laughs> Charlo's really imposing his will on uh, Korobov right now, and that's what he needs to do. He's just got to force, force himself on Korobov. The closer he gets, the more he forces himself close to him. He's gonna land his punches like he did there. Yeah, but he's gotta faint before he does that. He can't just go in with his uh, powerful no. straight legs. <laughs> Good counter hook stepping back. But if that was a check. <laughs> Final minute, round 11. A jab by Charlo. Big round for Charlo right now because he's really showing his in charge right now. A great check hook. Great that left hand by Corbo. One brother, Jamel Charlo, watching on a television monitor in his locker room. Following his first pro defeat earlier tonight. That's a smart thing. Got to go with that body. <laughs> you know, left hook right over. You know that anything can happen. He probably feels that uh, Jamal is ahead. He's winning the fight, but he knows he needs his last round just to put this, you know, find a stamp on it. He also said, "Don't run in and keep some head movement. Don't keep that head in one place." And he's doing a good job moving his head there. He just ducked and missed the left hook, left hand. <laughs> What's impressed you, Joe, about Korobov? Well, just about everything. Number one is endurance. He hasn't been in the ring for a year and a half, basically. Um, he's in there with one of the great middle weights. Oh, oh, that's, that's, what is. that's what he needed. Korobov was stunned by Charlo. Oh, good work by Charlo. Yeah. These guys are great finishers, but Charlo brothers, and this is looks like he's going to knock this uh, Korobov. He's got him on the run. He's got plenty of time. Two minutes. Korobov staggered. Well, this is what uh, Charlo needed to retain his title. He needed a big round here. And he's got one. He may be able to have the fight if he has another good one. 
This is a situation where you got to start it off with the jab. You got to give him something to keep his eyes on. You got to confuse him. And then come with the power punches. He's recovered pretty well. Both guys are tired right now. Both guys are digging deep. This is the last round. Charles still has over a minute to close the show. So he's got time. He certainly looks like a fresher of the two fighters. After those punches, yeah. But uh, again, Carl Bach has got his senses uh, about him right now. So he's, he's got his eye on uh, Charlo. And he's trying to avoid getting hit with the big shot again. But I don't know. Charlo's here on the end. Under a man to man. Charlo needs to come with that left hook again. Because it worked for him the first time. He needs to do it again. I would be telling him to a right hand left hook. Be right. But first, everything has to start with the jab. You gotta keep him confused. Well, you're right, because he, he fell short there with the right hand left hook without the jab. Well, he got left with a little left hand himself, but there's a good counter left hand for the top. Now to 20 seconds remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Larry Hazard Jr. scores about 119 to 108. Judges Steve Weisfeld and Max DeLuca both scores about 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner. And still, the WBC Let's show Bill you, you really wanted it.